a meditation that Pete and I wrote together. We, I've done it before, but it's been many years. Um, and there's a reading in the middle of it that um, was written in the 1600s. I found it. I don't remember where I found it, but it was this amazing reading. It was written by a woman to her friend in the 1600s. There is nothing I can give you, but there is much, while I cannot give it, you can take. No heaven can come to us unless our hearts find rest in today. Take heaven. No peace lies in the future that is not hidden in the present instant. The gloom of the world is but a shadow. Behind it, yet within reach of all, is joy. There is radiance and glory in the darkness, could we but see. And to see, we have only to look. I beseech you to look. Life is so generous a giver. But we, judging its gifts by their covering, cast them away as ugly or heavy or hard. Remove the covering and you will find beneath it a living splendor woven of love by wisdom with power. Welcome it, grasp it, and you touch the angel's hand that brings it to you. Everything we call a trial, a sorrow, or a duty, believe me, that angel's hand is there. The gift is there, and the wonder of an overshadowing presence. Our joys, too. Be not content with them just as joy. They, too, conceal a diviner gift. Life is so full of meaning and purpose, so full of beauty beneath its covering that you will find that earth but cloaks your heaven. Courage then to claim it, that is all. But courage you have, and the knowledge that we are pilgrims together, wending through unknown country home. And so, at this meditative time, I greet you, not quite as the world sends greetings, but with esteem and with a prayer that for you, now and forever, the day breaks and 
the shadows flee away. Thank you, Colette and Pete. That was absolutely beautiful. We appreciate you so very much and all that you do in creating that lovely time. Okay. Well, as you all know, today is a ceremony. It's our white stone ceremony. And if you're not familiar with that, it's where we receive our word for the year for 2019, the I am of our truth. And so that was a perfect, perfect reading and song to go with this. And the service is out of order again because we will, after the message, the meditation will be part of the process so that if you haven't already received your word for the year, you will receive it at that point and I'll be able to write it on your stone and then we'll move forward from there. So that's where we're at. So why do we have a white stone ceremony in unity? Is everybody familiar with the history of the white stone? Okay. In Jesus' days, during the time of the Roman Empire, when you were released from prison, you were given a white stone. You were to carry that stone with you wherever you went. Everybody knew that if you had a white stone with you, not only were you free, but you had a clean slate. You were able to begin anew. So carrying the stone gave you the benefits of being a Roman citizen again. That meant that the Roman army protected you. And in those days, that was no small thing. That was life and death. And that's where the beginnings of the white stone was created and from the standpoint in history. In unity, we adopted the ceremony to symbolize that we can leave behind whatever personal prison we may have created for ourselves. The ceremony is an opportunity to start the new year with no personal baggage. So, you have a choice today. You can leave all your personal baggage on the floor and not pick it up and walk out of this building free. Mind, body, and spirit. Or you can take it with you, drag it along behind you, for a couple more years. Your choice, I'll let you make it, however you, want to, however you want to do it. But it is the intention today that for the rest of this year, and I'm not talking about resolutions here, because in the ceremony, we do not make a list. We, we listen. We listen for that one word, one thought, that represents that change that we want in our life right now and for that transformation to be brought through 
the year with ease and grace. Okay, now, everybody say that with me. With ease and grace. Okay, thank you. So it's important for us to set an intention. And it's important for us to set an intention that is meaningful to each of us individually. So everybody received their white stone when they came in, is that correct? And a little pencil to write on. Now, it's been my experience, and I've been doing this for many years, that if you really want to remember your word and you want to carry this stone with you, when you get home, you might want to take a Sharpie <laughs> and trace over your white, your, your, your pencil, so that it kind of stays on there. If you're like me and you're going to go home and put it on your altar, it doesn't really matter, okay? Um, I will, when I get home, take a purple Sharpie and put it on my altar, but um, with the rest of the collections that I have through the years. As a reminder of what my intention is for this year. And this is an important part. It's not really my intention. It's Spirit's intention with me. Because I don't want to come at it from an egotistic realm. I want to come at it from the spiritual realm. So during the course of this service, I'm going to talk a lot about consciousness and blah, 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 blah. And then we'll move into a meditation. And during that time, hopefully you're open and receptive to your word that comes. Now, if a word doesn't come, that's okay. But here's what happens. So this morning, I hadn't gotten my word yet. And typically, when I'm going to do this in my preparation for the week coming in, um, the word will just pop into my head, and it'll be like, okay, here it is. So like last year, um, when I was preparing for the white stone ceremony um, in the shower, the word popped in my head, and it's like, wait a minute, I can't write it down right now, you know, what, do, what are you doing? Come on. Um, but I did remember it, and I went and wrote it down. I hadn't gotten the word today. I mean, I was like, Ray got his the other day, and I'm like, wait a minute. Um, so I sat in meditation this morning, and when the word came, I had to say, really, seriously, we're doing that one this year? Okay. Are you sure? This is not, I had to check in to make sure what my ego going, but no, okay, this is it. This is what we're going to do. So I got it. We ask our higher self, that divine mind, God, whatever you call it, for the opportunity that we're going to create this year. And that's what your word is. So from Revelations 2.17, let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers or overcomes, I give some of the hidden manna, and I will give a white stone. And on the stone is written a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. So hold your stone in your hand, knowing that this stone represents a clean slate, a fresh beginning, no matter what the past has been like for you, especially the last year, knowing that God's love is in and with you, around you, always supporting you. And Revelation 21.5 says, Behold, I make all things new. So there are many references in the Bible to the new beginnings, the rebirth of ourselves continuously through our journey. That's really what it's all about. The constant in life is change. And we can look at it from that struggle or we can do it with ease and grace and acceptance. And I prefer to do it in a positive with ease, grace, and acceptance. 
and go with the flow. It just makes my journey so much more pleasant, so much more happy in my existence, really good. And so just know that is part of the process. It's important not to use um, your will to come up with the name you desire or to come up with a name that is driven by your ego. It's best to go with whatever it is that pops in your mind right then when you ask the question. Don't judge it. Unless you're like me and you've got to argue a little bit with spirit because that's typically what I do. Um, don't judge, but really, don't judge the name that spirit's given you. Accept it. You may not have a clue about what it means. And that's okay. It will unfold to you as the year progresses. And I know this to be true because the last two years I've gotten some words and I'm like, what am I going to do with this one? I didn't have a clue. And now I understand. So the meaning will come to you. See the beauty in your stone. Just take a moment and see it. The stones are Jerusalem stone, if you're not familiar with the stones that we use. See its newness, its beauty. And know that as we journey on this path of awakening, the white stone in each of us is constantly being renewed, revitalized, and redeemed. The name that will be written on your stone is a symbol of your spiritual growth. Where we cancel out the old, we discontinue our old way of thinking, our old habits, and begin to partake in the manna. And in unity, manna is spiritual food that is ours for the asking. We become nourished and whole when we accept the manna, the spiritual food. And that's what our word is. The energy that we derive from this manna gives the inner energy required to move forward, upward, in our higher state of consciousness, a purified state of consciousness, a state of consciousness that's symbolized by the word on your stone. As this renewal takes place within, we gain the knowledge of a new name within us. But more importantly, we gain a deeper understanding of not only the name, but where it's leading us. The new name, the new spiritual name, that is the true nature of our being, is the name that we know of as I am. So I don't know if you guys have done this before or not, but what I like to do is write on one side of my stone, I am. And I'm going to do that right now, just so that as I go through this process, I am. Because I am whatever word, thought, is going to be symbolized on my stone. Each of us has come here with some type of bondage. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not, <laughs> there's something um, that is holding us captive. It may be, it, it's all part of our ego, it's all part of our shadow work, and that's okay, it's part of our humanness. And in order to grow, we have to let loosen it up and let it grow so our consciousness can rise. That's what we're doing here today. We have to get all, past all the nonsense which has kept us in prison and know that you're free. You can go wherever you want to go and be and do anything you choose. Anything you can believe and conceive, that's pretty unlimiting. What are your beliefs? What can you conceive? What is it in you 
that is awaiting to be birthed. Revelations talks about people being given the new name. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And what we mean there is the churches were the people of thoughts that were turned toward God. So to all appearances, my will, I give up. I just, I just let it go and be in that place of spirit. And, and then we're not talking about our outer ear, how we hear physically, right? Everybody acknowledges that part. There's an inner ear. Um, that's still small voice within us. That's what we want to listen to. That's the voice that's going to give us our word. We do this and develop that inner listening skill that moves us from our intellect to our heart. So it's at 12 inches that I talk about from time to time. This is your, this is your spiritual realm, right? This is what we've got to get through is this 12 inches right here. From the heart, from the heart to the head, from the head to the heart. We want to be in the heart. That's where we really want to live at. It's hard to be in the physical world and live from the heart because so much of what we do on a daily basis is our job, is that identity, that we create and manifest with, which is not bad. It's good because then we can take that and share it with the universe. And yet, we, in order to feed us spiritually, it's the heart that is the main tool that we use. And when we're working with our heart, we're really working in prayer and meditation. For those of you that are prayer chaplains or have been prayer chaplains, you totally understand what I'm talking about. So you're working from that state of prayerful consciousness. Then in the in this story, it talks about to everyone who conquers. For us as followers of spirit, it's not an outer war, right? So, so much of our physical life where it seemed to be in conflict in the outer world, you know, it, we see it every day. It's an inner war that requires surrendering. So to stop the war, we have to surrender. We have to let go of the things that are keeping us trapped. It's not easy, but it's doable. You just got to live from the heart space, live in the flow, and know that all things are good. But it is a paradox. <laughs> Only in surrender is there victory. So not an outer surrender or an outer victory, but that inner surrender, that inner victory of letting go, letting God be and move in and through you in everything that you do. Moses wandered around the wilderness and the manna that God, which God sent down every day, and the people would go and collect it daily. They did not have to do anything but collect the manna, collect the spiritual food, and the promises fulfilled. So if you go daily into your prayer and meditation work and you connect with that inner voice, your journey is fulfilled. Whatever path is opened, and you just have to glide down it with ease and grace. The second part of the promise is I will give a white stone and on that stone is written a new name and anyone, and no one knows except the one who receives it. During this time, people believed that when, that when people had overcome, 
and had made their connection with the divine, they got a new name. And they no longer were trapped in that bondage. And they no longer had to share that bondage with anyone. And that's what we're talking about here. We let go of that bondage, whatever it is for us today. And we no longer have to claim it ever again as ours. We are free. And we don't have to tell anybody any part of it. It is ours. It is our spiritual food. And everybody's on their own journey. And our journeys are all different. Even in the same family. We don't have to share it. It is ours. Personal to each of us. In the Bible there are many places where people got new names. Abraham, Ab- Abram became Abraham. Sari became Sarah. Um, Saul became Paul. We get to choose. We get to choose the essence of life. We get to choose the essence of life that the three wise men went to search for in the Christ child. That essence of love. That essence of a higher realization, the I am. That is each of us, individually and collectively. The I am is the awareness of the God self, of the higher self, our real truth of who we are. And that's why we use the white stone to find our real truth for this year. The white stone, white metaphysically represents joy, victory, purification. In the stone is a purified consciousness. We know that the Father and I are one. We know oneness in everything that we do. So as we begin to move into our meditation, Remember that Moses, God told Moses, I am who I am. I am that I am. I am God is. So your I am is God in action. That's why we're here. That's our truth. So as we make space for unlimited possibilities to become manifested in this year, 2019, we are creating a space in our consciousness, opening ourselves up to the unlimited possibilities, being free and unlimited for this year. I encourage you to invite the Holy Spirit into your heart and into your life for the next few minutes. And whatever it is that you're searching for, know that the answer is within you. Ask, and you shall receive. Give yourself permission to know that you have a new quality, a new name. Take on that essence of that name and carry it with you in your heart. And now we're going to do our meditation, Omnipresent Symphony our meditation song, and we're going to move into meditation to find our word. I am here inside of you. I am all around you. You are part of me. I am all a melody with a very special key with special notes arranged for our individuality God plays 
sees each one separately, a variation on a theme. All melodies belong to thee, omnipresent symphony. now I invite you just to become still and rest upon your seat. Close your eyes if you're of mind to or keep them open. Whatever is the most comfortable for you. Whenever we ask there is always an answer. Let's become still and allow God to express through you as you. And if you feel called, take your white stone in your hand and know it as a symbol of a new life for you, a symbol of who you have become or of who you are becoming. Feel the presence of spirit moving in and through you. The presence of spirit in this beautiful space. Feel your oneness. Know your oneness. Know your I amness of God. Feel the loving presence all around you, surrounding you, supporting you, knowing that you are safe and secure right where you are. You are loved and appreciated by the spiritual community. And the Christ, the I am in you, is open 
to make things anew. Taking a breath in, expanding. And letting go, letting go of anything that is holding on, that is no longer needed in your physical life, in your spiritual life, in the mental life. Let it go. Be open and receptive to that clean slate. You are free. You are unbound and limited. Free from the prison in which we put ourselves. We move forward in faith and asking for our name. It is a gift. It is a spiritual food. The gift to live differently. To live a more fully life. To begin again. It's what God is calling you to do or be. It's a whisper from your soul that you are so much more than you have ever let come into expression. Let it come easily. Let it mark your new beginnings. Filling the stone in your hand Hear it beckon to you. Spirit has decreed a name for you to be written on the stone. What will your life be called forward? As you're guided by spirit, trust in this moment, this sacred space, this moment of truth as we rest in the silence. If your name has come to you, take a moment to write it down and allow yourself to ask a deeper understanding, to ask if there are any steps to take. In this moment, allow yourself to simply be, to be open to spirit and to say, God in me reveals my true essence. And if you haven't yet received your word, it will come to you. We're going to take another short moment of rest.
And as we take a breath, we know that God in me reveals my true essence. God in me reveals my next step. God as me lives a joyous, peaceful, fulfilling life. Behold, I make all things new for you are my beloved in whom I am well pleased. We allow a thankfulness to flow over us. And with the thankfulness comes the power and guidance to to achieve all that we desire. This is our new name. We see it. We decree it. We are on the path to gain greater insights and awareness and mark a new beginning. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you this kingdom. Accept this consciousness of ever-increasing good in your life. Now I invite you to carry this white stone as a reminder of that promise. And so it is. Amen. preface this song because Chris didn't want me to but we went to see the Jason Mraz concert I don't know if anybody knows Jason Mraz I didn't my sister's a big fan my kids are fans I'd never heard I'd heard his songs before but I never it was a great concert Um, there was one song in particular that we talked about oh that'd be a great unity song so we're taking a walk yesterday in the woods, Chris and I, and I said, what am I going to sing for my second song tomorrow? i got to think about this. He said, what about that Jason Mraz song we talked about? I was like, cool. So we look it up, and we're listening to it on my phone while we're walking through the woods, and Chris started dancing through the woods. I know he didn't want anybody me to tell you that, but he was dancing. So um, I thought, great song, perfect. <laughs> I know y'all want to, you, will you trounce down the aisle, dear? So anyway, so I give it to Pete, and he listens to it, and he'd never heard it, so he, but it sounds like a simple song, but it's um, really wordy, so um, hopefully I'll get through this. I'm going to be looking at my paper a lot, because the words are fast, and hopefully it won't get too fast. <laughs> Great song for New Year's. May you have auspiciousness and causes. Oh, no, wait a minute. It's got to go up. Did you forget to, to move the key up? Did you transpose it? Oh, this is low. Oh, much better. Okay, much better. All right. Oh, better. May you have auspiciousness and causes of success. May you have the confidence to always do your best. May you take no effort in your being generous, sharing what you can, nothing more and nothing less. May you know the meaning of the word happiness. May you always lead from the beating in your chest. May you be treated like an esteemed guest. May you get to rest, may you catch your breath. And may the best of your todays be the worst of your tomorrows. Oh. May the road less paved be the road that you follow. Oh, well, here's to the hearts that you're going to touch. Here's to the lives that you're going to change. Here's to the infinite possible ways to love you. I want you to have it. Here's to the good times we're going to have. Here's to you always making me laugh. Here's to the spirit that I know lives within you. I want you to have it. I want you to have it all. I want you to have it all. I want you to have it all. May you have the confidence to always do your best. May you keep the chaos and the clutter off your desk. May you have unquestionable health and less stress. May you have no possessions, some measurable wealth. May you get a gold star on your next test. May your educate guesses always be correct. May you win prizes shining like diamonds. May you really own it each moment to the next. May your best oh, shoot. Start playing Pete, I'll catch up. <laughs> of 
your todays be the worst of your tomorrows. Oh, and may the road less pay be the road that you follow. Oh, well, here's to the hearts that you're going to touch. Here's to the lives that you're going to change. Here's to the infinite possible ways to love you. I want you to have it. Here's to the good times we're going to have. Here's to you always making me laugh. Here's to the spirit that I know lives within you. I want you to have it all. 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 Oh, I want you to have it all. I want you to have it all. I want you to have it all. Here's to the hearts that you're going to touch. Here's to the lives that you're going to change. Here's to the infinite possible ways to love you. I want you to have it. Here's to the good times we're going to have. Here's to you always making me laugh. Here's to the spirit that I know lives within you. I want you to have it all. 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 Here's to the good times we're going to have. Here's to you always making me laugh. Here's to the spirit that I know lives within you. I want you to have it all. I want you to have it all. Thank you. It's like my best. I love Jason Mraz. Found him like nine years ago. Theme for our Resilient Families program. I love Jason. So thank you. Energized. Woo. All right. Now as we come for that time of our offering, we offer to this beautiful spiritual community, our love, our gifts, whatever it is that you're sharing today as we say our offertory blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. My check's in there, so I have to give it to you. <laughs> I realize that. 